so my most popular video of 2020 is <laughs> the most 2020 video ever. <laughs> Congratulations, you did it. You survived 2020. I survived 2020. Badminton survived 2020. Give yourselves a round of applause. It wasn't easy, was it? I know I'm a little late to this year-end wrap-up. I think it is important to, you know, take stock and reflect and see how your year had been, even though this is maybe a year that everybody wants to forget. First, I would like to thank Pavel B for becoming my new patron. If you go to patreon.com, you can also help support this vlog. And since it's the beginning of a new year, I would like to give a shout out to all my patrons, Carol Ann, Len, Philip H, Marcus A, Xing L, Jonathan W, Louis R, Kumar P, and Pavel B. Thank you so, so much. You will see in my next video how your contributions are directly helping to improve this vlog. And I really appreciate it so, so much. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. So 2020 was a weird year, no? Not exactly the best year for badminton, pretty much anywhere in the world. I actually think me being in China, I kind of had it the best because while it started here and we had a very serious lockdown in the beginning, our lockdown eased up pretty soon. So by the time that other countries were starting to lock down, we were already done with it. And in the past six months, there have been literally dozens of amateur competitions in Shaman City. Obviously I didn't enter dozens of competitions, but I did enter some and you know, didn't have the best success. This year for me, the worst part for me this year was my health. While the rest of the world was dealing with COVID, I was dealing with my own health problems. And in the beginning of the year, I was in the emergency room, honestly, almost every two to three days. So this was not the best year for me personally on my badminton journey. In fact, this year, I'm almost a little embarrassed about because, you know, my health, my health problem has improved slightly, which is great news. I have not been to the emergency room recently, which is obviously excellent news for me personally, but I still can't play badminton at the level I used to. I still can't train badminton at the level I'm used to. And it's been a little hard for me psychologically to just like watch myself digress and get worse and it's embarrassing when I play competitions. It used to be my pride and joy that people would always say, oh, Xiaobing, you've improved so much. I have not heard that in a long time <laughs> because if someone says that, they are liars <laughs> because I have definitely not improved. I, I'm not pushing myself physically. I literally cannot push myself physically right now. So deep down, I know it's okay, but it is a little embarrassing to maybe have this public platform and in my badminton community, I'm, you know, kind of well known as the only white foreigner that plays badminton. So people do keep track of me and they do watch me and I'm very active in the community. So I know a lot of people and they've just been seeing me. It's a little hard on the ego, but we must get past our ego, right? We must fight the shame and embarrassment that we feel. And I know that I'm doing what's right for my body and I'm doing what's right for my life. And ultimately I can come back from this. It's just, I'm in the middle of it right now. So it kind of sucks. So, you know, if you saw my video in previous years, um, I keep a bullet journal. I write down everything I do. I keep a daily journal and I keep a habit tracker and everything. So I know exactly how many times I played badminton this year, which was, ladies and gentlemen, 58 times. That works out to five times a month, which is shockingly low. I used to play five times a week, <laughs> you know? I could not count the times I played badminton two years ago. In the beginning, I went a couple months without playing because I was in the hospital so much. I could barely stand, much less think about playing a sport. Somehow, I managed to make 31 videos, even though I only played 58 times which is not bad. And I, I don't really pay attention to like, which of my videos are popular and stuff. I'm like the worst YouTuber. I know, I just do this for fun. You know, I just do it because I like talking about badminton. So I thought it would be fun to see which were my most popular videos this year. 
So my most popular video of 2020 is <laughs> the most 2020 video ever. Badminton training drill you can do alone. <laughs> I didn't even know that. How many, how many views did it get? Whoa, 20,000 views. <laughs> it's like a three minute video. I just did it one day. My coach taught me this little thing. I thought it was really cute and I'd never seen it on a video before. So I just filmed it really quickly, put out this video. And uh, you know, then 2020 happened and I guess everyone was alone. So they were looking for things to do with badminton alone. That is very funny. Thank you for watching, you know, I can't believe anybody watches my stupid videos, <laughs> but thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing and thank you for all the nice comments. You know, I try to make sure to read and reply to, you know, as many comments as I can. So please keep them coming. So uh, what's next? I guess goals for 2021. With my health, I can't again set many goals. I did see this thing, it was on a writing website because I'm also a writer and they said, your goal for the next year should be 100 rejections. The goal is if you go for 100 rejections, you have to apply to you know agents, editors, publishers more than 100 times and maybe you'll get a few acceptances and all that. So I was thinking, how could I apply that to badminton? Because I do like that idea. Don't, don't make a goal of what you hope to achieve. It's like make an outlandish failure goal because you will succeed slightly on the way to a huge failure. You can't fail entirely. At least I don't think you can. <laughs> I was trying to think of how I can apply that to badminton make a goal of like losing 20 tournaments. Unfortunately, that is quite easy for me to achieve as this year has proven as I think the highest place I got this year was seventh place when in previous years I have always managed the lowest place I would get was fifth. So pretty good at losing this year and I, I can't change it, you know, because my health. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna force myself to keep at it. I'm just gonna continue to enter as many competitions as I can. I lose, I lose. I can't, I can't commit to any workout regime. I can't commit to any eating regime because uh, my doctor is kind of continually, we're trying me with different foods and stuff to see if that will help my health problem too. So I can't really set any solid goals except enter every competition that I can find. <laughs> that's, that's my goal of 2021, is just enter every competition I can find. Because even if I'm gonna lose, you know, I've always said competitions need losers, and I always encourage, you know, lower level players to enter competitions when you can. Because even if you lose, even if you're not ready, like you get that competition feeling, competitive badminton players see your face, you know, at the very least, even if your face is red with embarrassment because you lost so miserably, they still see your face and you still do kind of are in this elite group of badminton players that, you know, have a goal besides just playing for fun. So I will continue to do that. And that's really the only goal I have. What about you though? Do you have any goals for 2021? I know a lot of you are maybe on second or third lockdown, or maybe you're still in your first lockdown. I know maybe it's hard to set any sort of goals for yourself as well. Do you have any little baby badminton goals that you hope you can achieve? But again, we're kind of at the mercy of the world and the pandemic. In a couple days, the Thai Open will be starting to play and it's been cool to see all the pro players. They've been doing a lot on social media as they have been locked down and pretty bored, seemingly quite bored in their hotel rooms in Thailand because they can't go out, they can't talk to other people, they eat all their meals in their room. They only have a short time for training and a short time for working out. So that's really interesting. That'll be fun to watch. Yeah, I guess, you know, just thank you for watching my videos and my heart goes out to badminton in the world and I hope this year will be a better year for everybody and I hope this year will be a better year for badminton and I hope it'll be a better year for your badminton and I hope it'll be a better year for my badminton. So I hope we can, you know, continue to get through this tough time and kick butt. Thank you so much for following me this year and please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you guys next time on the court. Bye.
谢啦。嗯，好的，非常好。